fancy seeing you here today. I didn't expect that. Hey, how about that? It's an unusual setting, this one, isn't it? No, I am set off in the motor home yet. I just haven't had to, uh, I've got a few commitments and then uh, I am definitely leaving uh, the latest by the beginning of July. So I thought what I would do in the meantime is put a few films out that I did in Highgate Cemetery. I spent a whole day walking around its fantastic cemetery. Massive. And on the, not the, the, the main side where George Michael is, but on the other side I was wandering along and suddenly I came across one and it said, Max Wall. I thought, hang on, I know that guy. Yeah, Max Wall, really funny comedian. So um, until we get off in the new motor on Beep Beep, by the way, thanks for all the names and everything. Uh, I've had some great ones. Uh, somebody um, is sending me a, uh, it's a doll of uh, Roadrunner. And I, even though the idea of Beep Beep was supposed to be the horn, Beep Beep, I do like that cartoon. I uh, loved it when I was a kid. So I am thinking of using Roadrunner as a symbol and, and as a name for, for the motorhome. Anyway, not totally sure yet, but I think I like the idea, do you? So, today is the first of a few films that I'm going to put out from Highgate Cemetery. So tell me what you think. Here it comes now. What a gem I found just by accident. Um, I mean, this guy was uniquely funny. He used to have a sort of bald uh, patch, you know, a bald wig with the hair long at the side. Max Wall. Max Wall was an old style theatre comedian. And um, he had a very rubbery and very flexible body and he could do all these really strange walks highly humorous um he did the moonwalk long before michael jackson were born so yeah he was a, a unique man a very morose style very lugubrious uh he, he, in other words he he could get the audience laughing one minute and then he'd suddenly turn it all very dark and he'd tell some very sombre story and the audience would be like that, <gasps> listening, and then suddenly, bang, you get the punchline. You'd have to see him to, to understand. I'll put a little clipping on. A unique, really, really funny guy. I'm very well known in the field of classical music. I'm also well known in the field behind the gas <laughs> My visits there get fewer. <laughs> I can only put this down to Anna Domini. Dear old Anna. <laughs> she knocked hell out of me, kid. I remember Roy Hood talking about him. He said when he was a little boy, he was watching Maxwell and uh, he, he, he was killing himself laughing at the jokes. And some people liked him and some people didn't. But uh, Roy Hood thought it was hilarious. He'd tell some really funny jokes like, um, uh, I'm not a comedian, but he'd say something like, um, I've got uh, 14 or 15 women chasing after me, tearing the hair out to get me. But who wants a woman with a bald head? You know, that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> and that's why I'm not a comedian, by the way. But yeah, it, it, no, it was, it, was, it was hilarious, really. Even as a, he had those sort of spindly little legs and he'd twist his legs around and I'll show you a clip and you'll get the idea. Um, he had a very strange mother who I think she was absolutely nuts. And um, in his career, there was some scandal because in the 1950s, he left his wife. But he said on Parkinson's that he left his wife and he did get a beauty queen that he, he, he judged at Markham to be his new girlfriend. But that happened after he'd left his wife. He left his wife, he said, because the marriage finished. And then shortly after that, he reconnected with this woman who he'd, he'd met in Markham. Towards the latter part of his career, the, uh, the theatres were closing down and uh, Maxwell had to come up north and start doing the working men's clubs. But he never took that in a bad way. He was a nice guy. And he adapted to it. He just enjoyed doing the work. Maxwell was born Maxwell George Lorimer, son of a successful musical entertainer, Jack Jock Lorimer. Maxwell married dancer Marion Polo and the couple had five children. 
Max is best remembered for his ludicrous attire and his hilarious strutting Professor Wolofsky. John Cleese has acknowledged Max's influence on his own Ministry of Silly Walks, the sketch for Monty Python's Flying Circus. On the afternoon of the 20th of May 1990, Max fell at Simpsons in the Strand in central London, fracturing his skull. He was conveyed by ambulance to the Westminster Hospital in an unconscious state, but never regained consciousness, and died there early in the morning. There is a Max Wall Society which aims to perpetuate his memory. In 2006, the Society placed an unofficial blue plaque on Walls' birthplace in South London. There we go, Max Wall. Look at that. I mean, it's before my era, but I... Max, you were fantastic, uniquely funny. What a way you had with you. Max Wall, 1908 to 1990. I believe that since my life began, the most I've had is just talent to amuse. <laughs> he did, he did. Oh, that's, that's superb, that. So there we go, that's Maxwell. A very unusual comedian. He was a very lugubrious sort of somber dark kind of character um, but he used a lot of psychology in his humour and he, he drew a lot from his real life but I think he was a, a genius and often he, people call him that and he used to love that and I think he was such a, an unusual comedian such a rubbery body and unique way of dancing you know if you've not watched him watch him on YouTube honestly he's hilarious so uh, yeah great guy so, folks, that's it for today. I'm going to see you on the road. And don't forget, if you want me to do anyone in particular, let me know and I'll try, you know. So let's have a great summer and I'll see you all very soon. And whatever you're doing, have a good day. Pull the good bits out, even if you've got to do the drudgery. Make sure you have a nice day. Sodom. <laughs> see you all very soon. Take care from me, Alan, at Motor on Beep Beep. Bye for now. See ya.